Hello, this is David, and welcome to Let's Play Wild Arms 4. Today we are in the Kaoshian Pass. Uh, last time I actually did a little bit of off-screen, I wouldn't say grinding, I just kind of went through the sea of trees. You're traveling because of your job, right, Gohan? What kind of job is it? To put it simply, I'm looking for someone. My job is to find a certain individual who vanished during the war. So that's what you meant by a journey with an objective but no destination. Searching for someone with no set destination is no different from wandering around aimlessly. Can you really call that a job? Heh, <laughs> you got me there. This person who disappeared, is it a friend or a family member of yours? This search started out as just another job a friend of mine hired me for, but somewhere along the way, it went beyond just another job, and I started wanting to meet this guy and talk to him myself. He's neither friend nor family, but for me, we're bound by a bond even stronger than blood. We met once before on the battlefield, which is the worst possible way to meet someone if you ask me. We met, and we parted ways several times. We hardly spoke at all, but I still felt a close bond with him. Back then, he was known by a different name than the one people use now. The guy I'm searching for is a war criminal. Is that right? Huh. Well, anyway, um, I was in that sea of trees, which is what I called that primeval forest that we were in last time, where he just kind of went right. And I just wanted to check to see if there was any accelerator stuff, which there isn't. But uh, along the way, I ran into two very special enemies. One is a, um, a grow apple, and the other one is a melcom, and they both work the same way. Oh, what do we have here? Oh, it's more new enemies. And uh, anyway, those enemies, uh, basically, if you attack them, they only have one HP. And if you attack them, let's see, with water to water, wait, to nothing. And if you attack them, like, say that you hit them for, like, 3,000 damage, then with a Grow Apple, you get 3,000 experience. If you hit them, if you hit the Melcom for, like, 3,000 damage, then you would get, uh, 3,000 gold. So, it's really kind of nice, I've got to say. I can't leave there. Um, so anyway, yeah, I met up with both of those guys there, which was awesome. Um, and I was able to gain a shit ton of levels, especially because... I was even able to get in turn before the grapple went, and uh, I was able to use a, um, a uh, what's it called, a, uh, a lucky card to double my experience. So I ended up getting something like 7,000 damage on, uh, on them, which was amazing for that 7,000 experience points. Let's see now. Okay, shoot again. Ugh. Eh, I'm just going to here. Now watch me in action. Kill anything for you. And I'll just material this guy to death and be done with it. <laughs> Ooh, treasure! Ugh. It seems like every time that I miss a chest, it's like a duplicator or, or a dragon fossil or something really cool like that. And whenever I get one, it's a frickin' antidote or a toy hammer or some bullshit or a pinwheel. Gone. The guy you're looking for. You said he's a war criminal. Did he do something bad? Bad? Now that's a good question. Well, let me ask you something then. How would you define bad? Huh? Uh, like making trouble for people, or the war that took place ten years ago, stuff like that. The war, yeah. A lot of blood and a lot of tears, pointless tragedies were repeated over and over again all around the world. Then again, was every single aspect of the war bad? War itself is stupid and pointless. It's a tragedy that should never be repeated. But does that mean that all the soldiers who fought on the battlefield were bad as well? There were those who stepped forward and took up arms to fight for the families they loved, fathers, mothers, wives, and children. And there were those who stepped forward and became shields to protect their friends and lovers, those they were grateful to, their homelands. The man I'm pursuing is known as a war criminal, but me? I don't think that he's all that bad of a guy. How would you define bad gone? It's when you fail to live up to the beliefs in your heart, your own moral code. Those who fail to follow their own beliefs should be ashamed to call themselves adults. That guy always lived and fought for what he believed in. There was nothing he needed to be ashamed about. He was by far the coolest person I've ever known. So, he's chasing after someone who we met on the battlefield, but 
then he says that he wants to kill him, but then he says that he's the coolest one he's ever known. That doesn't really make a lot of sense. Have I killed these guys? Yeah, I've killed these guys before. Well, not that it really matters, because I'm just going to kill him with one shot for Kel. Yeah, boom, done the end. I was going to skip that battle, but... Why? <laughs> I mean, why? Okay, let's just talk to this guy. Ooh, yeah, let's see what he got here. Um, I do want to get at least ten heal berries. I have seven right now, so I'll get three more. Let's look at this stuff. Um, might as well get a couple medicine. Just to be on the safe side, a couple of these little things. What are these things? Uh... God, a travel dodge, why not? Whatever. Sure. Okay. We're good to go. But then we can go over... Let's see where we Hmm, there should be a little ledge over here. Oh, right over here. There we go. Okay. Yeah, just grab this treasure. Ooh, a bronze sun. I wonder if that increases your max HP too, kind of like a silver sun. Let's see. Bronze. Yeah, only 100 though. And everybody else has better badges anyway, so I'm not too worried about that. We'll go ahead and uh, break this. Sure, I'll purify it. Oh, what do we got here? Shelburne's mole crickets. Oh, and they're all in that detonate mode. Oh, what a pain in the ass. Okay, um... Ooh. Yeah, sure. Ugh, I hate when Yuli doesn't start in the late point. When Yuli doesn't start in the late point, then she can't use her attack material. She can just, um... Oh, God. Kill this guy. She can just use her healing material, so then you got to waste two turns. One to bring her to the, to the attack late point, and one to actually use it. So it really makes her quite useless. So, uh, I guess I'll just go ahead and heal. I mean, there's nothing really else that she can do. No way I'm gonna lose! Okay, so back here. Attack that guy. Nobody can't kill anybody, unfortunately. Uh, I could intrude with her. Yeah, why not? I'll intrude. And then try to kill enemies A and B since they're coming up next. So I can kill this guy. He's coming up next. And enemy B. Kill that one too. Yeah, and that, that, um, the attack that she's using to smash it, it pierces the shell defensive power that it has, because it's really strong against, um, against, uh, physical attack. But Raquel can pierce that, which is really quite nice. Makes her more powerful than everybody else, anyway. I mean, she's already the most powerful character, bar none. I mean, god, 3,000 damage is insane. Just in a regular hit. I mean, my god. Okay, excellent. So let's go ahead and save. Why not? And keep on moving, moving and cruising right along. Anything to sell mode? No. God forbid. I get what you mean about bad being related to looking shameful and pathetic, but what's good then? Does it have something to do with looking cool? Who knows? But that's what I believe in, and believing is a part of being good. Huh? When you're lost in the darkness and feel like you're about to slip down the easy path, stop what you're doing and face your beliefs. Being good never means betraying those beliefs, no matter what the circumstances. But they say there's no such thing as good and evil. Tossing those words around like that sounds pathetic, like you're trying to make yourself look good. Huh, <laughs> yeah. I thought the same thing when I was your age. I guess everyone probably does, huh? And they probably think that they're cool for thinking that way. What to think is up to you, but good really does exist. It's in your heart. It's okay to believe in it, and it's not a mistake to do so either. Really? For example, say you saw someone dive under the water with no regard for his own life to save a drowning child. Wouldn't you say that that was something good? Or is putting your own life in danger to rescue another just an act of foolishness and nothing more? Although good and evil are hard to see and feel, that doesn't mean that they don't exist. And though it may be hard to discern, I think the concept of good is a beautiful and precious thing. It's important to ask questions about good and evil. That's how children expand their worldview and find their way along the path to adulthood. But if you just stop there, they'll always be a child. 
You can't grow up without first confronting your beliefs about what's right and what's not. You gotta be responsible for what you believe in. See, growing old doesn't automatically make you an adult, it just makes you old. I worry about that sometimes, whether what I thought was right at the time was really right or not. Sometimes, I'd even worry that maybe there was no such thing as right or wrong, but after what you just said, I think I feel a little better. I don't want things to just end with me being scared and unable to do anything. Well, it's not like I'm such a paragon of adulthood that I should be lecturing other people about it either. Uh, I'm so sick of the young, old, good, bad... Ooh, new enemies. Just like the, the adult child thing. It's just, it's just stupid. I'm sorry. It's just stupid. I'm so over it. Okay, these guys. Oh, weak to wind. Or no, weak to earth. Flying. But, yeah, I'm gonna kill them anyway with one blast. So, there you go. And then the whole, like, can you really be good? Can you really be evil thing? Of course you can be fucking good! How retarded is that? That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life! Of course you can be good. Stupid. Ugh. And then Arno is like, well, how are you good? Are you good because you're cool? Like, what the hell does being cool have to be have to do with being good? I mean, it's just it's just dumb. It's just fucking dumb. That's the end of my story on that. Eh, at least his breath meant he cares. Anything in Excel mode? No. Ugh. No. <laughs> I always like to check. Yeah, I mean, like, I don't understand when he's going around and equating coolness with goodness. Like, think back to high school. Weren't all the cool kids like the bad ones that got sent to the principal principal's office and all that? They weren't good. It's just dumb. I wish all adults was understanding and easy to talk to you, Gone. Huh? Sounds like you're a regular kid after all. Come on, you can tell me what's on your mind. A little adult wisdom will give you a big boost in growing up. Okay, better journey. We're on the run from some soldiers. I think they call themselves Brionic. Brionic? You don't have to yell. You've heard of them? Uh, yeah, kind of. It sounds like you're in some serious trouble. Yeah, they're after Yuli. You don't like Brionic either, huh? I'm not sure like is the right term for it. Let's just say they're a never-ending source of trouble for me, and leave it at that. What's wrong, Gone? Why are you looking back? Uh, it's just I'd rather not run into them. I just wanted to make sure they hadn't caught up to us. Look, hate to whip out on you, but I think I better split. After everything you said, the moment you learn that we're up against soldiers, you run away? I've got my own problems too, come on, you understand, right? Besides. It's not like I'm turning against you or anything. I'll always be on your side. And if you get in any kind of real trouble with Brianek, I promise I'll come help you out. You're making that awfully hard to believe. What if I told you I want to protect the young lady who made it that tasty meal? Is that more believable? In any case, I don't want you to go thinking all adults are your enemies. Gone? We'll meet again, right? Yeah, of course. Then, no need to say goodbye. And we don't need to shake hands either. Instead, at times like this, this'll do for saying goodbye. And this'll do for shaking hands. Gone! Yeah! This is so dumb. <laughs> Just as suddenly as he's appeared, he's gone. He's loud, he's obnoxious, and he... He's a fun person, isn't he? It sounds like he just doesn't think things through very much. That's why he's always running around like that. Eh, sounds more to me it's like he's living up to his name. He's good and gone. Okay, well, let's see what we've got over here. Where are we at now? The Platapana? Yeah, Platapana... Platapana passes. God, say that three times fast. Oh, cool. A little, like, volcano lava temple area. Do we really have to go through here to get to the train station? According to the map, the path is blocked by several mountains and valleys. In order to reach our destination quickly, we'll have to take the roundabout route. What's wrong, Yuli? There's something, and it's coming this way. Oh no, don't tell me those Brianic people have already caught up with us. No, this one's coming from 
Underground? Well, shit on my head. Yikes! Whoa! It's huge! A monster up ahead. And reenact to the rear. What are we supposed to do now? We're supposed to glitch out of sound. Okay, let's see what we got here. Uh, weak to wind. Okay, so, do I even have a wind? No, of course not. Okay, so, go ahead and move up here, close them in. Well, it looks like that doesn't really matter, he can just kind of teleport wherever the hell he wants to go. So, um, I'm gonna lock him in the hex. Yeah. No, no, no. That one, there we go. God, I didn't want to lock myself in the hex, that would have sucked. Okay, um... Uh, yeah, go ahead and protect us, why not? Wait, did I lock myself in the hex? Did I, did I lock myself in the hex? Oh, I swear to Jesus, I swear to God, oh my God, I can't stand it. Nothing! I don't think I locked myself in the hex. A physical barrier, magic barrier, and... Oh, he... Oh, okay. He debuffed me. Gotcha. That's the wrong gonna debuff you, so screw you. Mm. This is no good. Oh, well, she gets a... She gets a turn coming up at least. That's nice. Here I go. So, uh... Let's heal ourselves. Arno's really good because he has great evasion. It's really quite nice. Okay. And let's slow the bitch down. And yeah, it is good timing for some intrude. Nope, not at all. I'm going to intrude the fuck out of you. And then Comet Strike! Bam, bitch! This should be interesting. Bam! Let's hit his three thousand comic strikes. And you're good. Don't underestimate me. I wonder how much you do with just a regular attack. Oh, it's not even worth doing a comic strike. Let's go ahead and intrude again. And just keep on moving. Bam! Oh wow! Five thousand! Shit! You don't fuck around with her, damn! Let's keep going. Wow, look at that. Oh, shit, I forgot he's a lucky card in hell. Okay, well, that was easy enough. Anyway, next time on Let's Play Wild Arms 4, we will go exploring the Pala Platatina Passage? Palatina Passage? I don't know, whatever. This has been David. If you'd like, please like, comment, and subscribe. Have a good day.